Peace and blessings. Happy Sunday. I'm the Moon Mama. How are you all doing today? I am starting to feel kind of like myself again because the kitties have been, um, they got spayed on Wednesday and so they're kind of starting to recover now. <laughs> Let's see if I can show you are that they are in the window. I got these little onesies for them, for cats, so that they don't lick their sutures and break them. Um, and so it's just been, I was showing you guys that yesterday. This has been, um, it's fine. You know what I mean? I feel like it's, um, it's just interesting being an animal owner. Like, I, that's not really that, I don't really have that much to ever say about it, but it's interesting. Like, I've never had animals before. Um, I'm in my 50s, my first time, you know, being an animal owner, and it's really fascinating how loving they are and how sweet and magical and just there's such a thing. Like, one of the things that's fascinating is how they understand what I'm saying, like exactly what I'm saying. Like, one of them has a tendency to eat the other's food, and I started saying, don't eat her food, like give her a chance to finish it. And and then I just sort of moved the food and took it somewhere else for a couple of days. And then I bought it back so they can be together. Now she does it. Like she just, she'll finish eating her food and then she'll look over and then she'll go and let her sister finish. And I can feel that they understand exactly what I'm communicating. And that to me is surreal. I just really love it. So today is the sun day. Today is the day governed by the sun. The sun is currently in Gemini, the second degree of Gemini. And... Um, and so we are in a new energy. Oh, God. So Gemini, Gemini is the energy that gets a really hard rap. And, you know, if we think about people who are Geminis, Kanye is a Gemini, was or is a Gemini, Prince, Trump. Um, who else are famous Geminis? God, I feel like I want to say Andre 3000. I don't know, though, but Gemini is the energy that is so significant to our understanding of ourselves. And the thing about Gemini is that it has a dual nature. That's why Gemini gets such a hard rap, because um, there can be an aloofness or a um, or a, an attention deficit is what I'll say. You know, one of the things I have a friend, a, a friend of mine who is a Gemini and when he's present, he's present. And when he's not, he is somewhere else. <laughs> and and I can feel the energy of that because he also has a Venus and Cancer. So when his mind goes to something else or someone else or he's not present with me, I can feel it right away. Gemini, there was a time in my life when I was um, experiencing a lot of trauma pain in my body from my childhood and I realized that my body was communicating to my mind and then my mind would create a story and scenario around the feeling that I was having in my body and then I would continue to project because when my mind and my body agree, I would continue to project the reality of what it was that I was desiring, what I was experiencing, right? So it's like what you focus on grows and it grows because you focus on it and that's Gemini. It's, it's truly understanding that our mind is the vehicle by which we create this reality and Gemini is the mind. And currently Mercury is in Gemini um, about to station for uh, its retrograde. And so while the sun is in Gemini for the next 30 days and we're having a Mercury retrograde, which is going to be a pretty significant one, it's very important that we be mindful of the story that we're telling ourselves. Like, who are you? And, and, you know, so we had, so let me say this. My work is always about healing and transformation. I believe that there's nothing else as important right now on the planet as us healing and doing the work to um, integrate and transmute the last thousand or so years, right, as human beings. And this requires that we understand the system that we are in, you know? So I have done the work to understand it 
to my best ability through the through the lens of a black woman because that has been my experience here in America. So I'm not speaking to any other, I'm not speaking for any other group. I'm not even speaking for other black women. I'm just sharing what I have learned around how we relate to this system. And it's still unique because everyone, like everyone has a different fingerprint everyone has a unique relationship to the universe and to the planet. And so it's important. The astrology will help us understand that. And so, um, and so when we can, when we understand our astrology, then we can tell our own story. So you can become the hero in your own story. So for, I know for me, I'm a Virgo. My son is conjunct Pluto. My son is conjunct Jupiter. My son is damn near conjunct Uranus all in the sixth house in Virgo. And so what I know that this means that I am the, he, I, my, my heroic energy, the hero, the, the Heru, the sun is expressed through the Virgo energy of being a healer, being someone who integrates, being someone who can, um, can alchemize and transmute energy. That is how my Haru, the sun shows up. And the sun in Gemini, whether you have, we all have the sun in Gemini right now is because Gemini is your perceived reality, the story you tell, um, the information, right? So like how you gather information and then how you then live that information out in your life. So we want to be very um, responsible. That's what I want to say. The work that I'm doing for me is about healing. So it means that I'm responsible for everything because you can't heal anything unless you are willing to look at it. So I'm willing to look at my shadow. I'm willing to look at my shame. I'm willing to look at my, my, um, my lies. I'm willing to look at everything that is an aspect of me for the purpose of transmuting it. And because with the sun is in Gemini and Mercury is going retrograde, I am doing everything in my power to make sure that I am getting the clear, clear, um, information as possible. So I'm using my tarot cards, right? So these are my my um, cards. This is my oracle deck. I'm also using a pendulum. Let's see if I, you know, just throughout the day, there are times in my life where I'm aware that the energies are very, that um, is what I want to say, chaotic, right? The energies are very chaotic. And so I do things to, this is my pendulum, um, and this board has the moon cycles and the yes and no. And and I do things to fortify my energy so that I can make sure, because sometimes the energy is chaotic and it's hard to get really clear about what's the best choice, right? What would be my highest and best choice? So I use these divination tools to help me through seasons like Mercury retrograde and when the sun is in Gemini, because Gemini is going to give us the opportunity to create a new perceived reality, right? And Gemini at the second degree is about purity. It's really recognizing that there is a um, there is an experience that is pure. The light comes in through our subconscious. We are it impacts our glandular system and how we feel in our bodies, our feelings, which we mastered in Taurus. How we feel, our access to pleasure when we do that, then that projects a reality. So if we are caught up in our history, if we're telling old stories, like, you know, he did that, or she did that, or I don't have this, or if we've not forgiven our parents or, or made peace with who our parents were, then we will continue to project the old realities into the new experience. And that's why I'm saying my work is about healing so that we can understand that healing truly for me and my perspective, perspective is in the mind because this is a mental reality and everything comes through our thoughts. So what we want to do in order to heal our bodies, our lives, anything in our lives, we want to change our perceptions. Now, the thing is, these perceived, these, these thoughts and our perceptions are ingrained in us, right? We are, we've been holding them for, you know, for as long as we've been born from zero to seven for many of us. So it takes time. It doesn't always happen overnight. It takes time. Like I know my healing process took decades, right? And I'm still in it. I don't think we ever get out of it personally, but I'm not, you know, in the throes of it in the way that I used to be. So um, purity, like really understanding, like purity is like, you know, letting go of the judgment, allowing, trusting the process, 
understanding that there's something greater going on here, that you're part of a bigger thing that is not just about you. And the moon today is in Libra, and Libra is about partnership, marriage and partnership, our relationship with others. That's really basically what it is. And the moon at 22 degrees um, is about your the dream. So what is, what is your dream in your connection with other people, right? What is your dream? And, you know, I know I talk to women constantly who are in, in dreams of wanting love and relationship, and that is a beautiful thing. But the first relationship that you are having is the one that you're having with your perceived reality. Because whatever you believe about men, whatever you believe about love is what you will then attract in your connection to others. Whatever you believe based upon what you saw your mother experience or your father experience or you saw your parents do, if you've not done the work to heal your trauma and your karma, you will project a relationship that is based upon what you saw growing up. I know that was my experience. And so for many years, I would attract men who were like my father, you know, men who I felt were destructive, men who I felt were unavailable, men who I felt were unkind. And what I had to do with that was make peace with it. I had to make peace with those stories, with those with those projections and recognize that I was creating them at the core level. How are you doing? That I was creating them at the core level of myself through my early childhood patterning and then do the work to make peace with it, right? Like okay, the universe has a destructive nature. Let me make peace with that. Yes. The universe has a predatory nature. Let me make peace with that. And when you make peace with something, you can alchemize it into another experience, into another reality. So with that, um, we're going to be in the Gemini, Gemini sun for 29 more days. <laughs> and this is beautiful. Be responsible. Mercury's going into retrograde in a week. And so really when Mercury goes into retrograde, it's an opportunity to go back, to renew, to look at your behavior patterns. You know, if you want to book a reading with me so you can find out how you want to use this Mercury retrograde energy, just, you know, book a transit reading. And how do you want to use the Mercury retrograde energy? I know Mercury is retrograding through my third house. So I want to use this energy to renew my perceived reality, to understand that I can create through my thought and my thinking any any reality I desire. If I can hold it in my mind, if I can believe it through my Piscean energy, then it is certainly going to come into reality. So this is how we want to be present to this Mercury energy, the Sun and Mercury, um, Mercury, 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 the Sun and Gemini, Mercury and Gemini, a retrograde coming soon. And we are also moving into a full moon in Sagittarius, which is opposite Gemini because the nodes are in Gemini and Sagittarius. So we are releasing all the things that have blocked us from living in our truth. We are stepping more powerfully into the truth of the information and the wisdom that is, um, that is ours that the information that will allow us to live the lives and create the realities that we desire. So with that, I hope this is helpful. Do your best to fortify yourself, to secure yourself, to, to be responsible for everything. Judge nothing and no one, not even yourself, because anything you judge, you own. Anything you judge, you claim. All right, I'm the Moon Mama. Peace and blessings. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.